I am Alexander B. Stevens. This is the brand new up and coming podcast entitled What Is He Thinking? The sometimes uncomfortable, sometimes politically incorrect, but always sincere and truthful podcast for the benefit of women from the perspective of men. You've got questions? I've got answers. 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 What's going on? Welcome to episode number 15 of the podcast, episode two of the marriage series, and part one of the Perspective of a Mrs. interview. I'm Alexander B. Stevens, Mr. You Have Questions, I Have Answers. And today I want to shake things up a little bit, do something a little bit different, and bring on one of my long-term female friends to offer a different perspective when it comes to dating and an inside perspective when it comes to marriage. This friend of mine has been married for approximately five years and three months, and she's happier now than she's ever been before. After a word from our sponsors, I would like to welcome to the show, Miss Karen F. Franklin. You know, it's corner. It's not just a website. It's not just a podcast. It's a brand and a movement. Go to ninoscorner.com, N-I-N-O-S corner dot com to get the latest products from Nino. Go to the book section to find Nino's three number one best selling books. Can You Love Me? A Memoir, A Tribute, Battles Blueprint, Five Self Battles to Defeat for Success, and My Wonderful Life and Adoption Story. If you need merchandise, we have that for you too. Our custom Do You Signature Series shirts and other apparel were sure to please. Again, Visit www.ninoscorner.com, N-I-N-O-S, corner.com for more information. How you doing today? I am good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and excited to discuss all things relationships and marriage. Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. Sounds good. Me and Karen met, what, 2004 in college? 2004. You hit my inbox on Facebook. Oh, yeah. This is when Facebook was uh, exclusive to just college kids only. Dot and, uh, edu. <laughs> I felt like, you know, I want to spread the word of God. So I was just looking for people who look like they might need a Bible study. And I was hitting up attractive women on Facebook. That's what that's what I was doing back then. That's your story. Stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So we definitely have kept in touch since then. Definitely. I think you've been to every birthday gathering that I've had. I've been to a few of yours, just waiting on the house warming and all the other good stuff. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. If we weren't in these COVID times, then my birthday that just passed would have been a housewarming. I had planned that for like two years, but. I understand. <laughs> didn't end up I happening. Understand. Anyway, Miss Franklin, could you uh, tell my audience a little bit about yourself? A little bit about myself. Well, I am a woman in her late late 30s. As I said, I've been married for about five years. I am in education. I enjoy educating the youth. I consider myself to be a jack of all trades, trying to become a master at a few. I love to read and write and decorate. And right now I am in the process of starting my own IG series about my favorite thing, which is 90s R&B. So that's coming up soon. And I mean, if I were to boil it all down, I would say that I'm a retired hot girl. <laughs> a retired hot girl. <laughs> all those things before didn't doesn't necessarily sound like it leads to hot girl, but. <laughs> I know. I'm a retired hot girl. Like the young girl say, I'm a retired hot girl. <laughs> all right. Hot girl summer has to end sometime. All right. Yes. I guess it ended, what, five years ago, seven years ago? Um, I would say about 10 years ago. Oh, actually. 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Even before I met him. So 
All right, I'm not mad at you. We all have to live and learn and go through our stages and phases. Definitely. So as you know, this is a dating and relationship podcast from the male perspective, but I felt like it would benefit my audience to bring a woman on who could maybe speak the language, speak womanese a little bit better than I can. So uh, that's why I decided to bring you on. But since my audience does not necessarily know you as well as I do, what would you say gives you credibility to uh, speak on relationships and marriage besides, I guess, the five years you've been in a marriage? Five years that I've been in a marriage, the years that I've spent dating, I've been married, like I said, five years. But prior to that, I mean, I was having an adult dating life. I got married at a late age, what most would consider late. And I figured that I have a really good judge of character when it comes to people. I'm very open and accepting of people and their different opinions. And But I, I feel like I can read people really easily. Even just based off of social media, I can just see what type of person they are. So I think that qualifies me as a dating expert. Now, not an expert, but I'm a good judge of character. Yeah, you must be after judging my character off of a 2004 Facebook <laughs> Facebook page, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, I guess... Tool, so you had to be a good person. <laughs> oh, true, true. <laughs> I guess let's get into it. On my episode, Men Desire a Compliment, Not a Competitor, one of the things I discuss is how men kind of look for and like things that are different in a woman and not things that are the same as they are. And then I try to explain and describe femininity as best I could, but of course I'm a man, so I had to rely on YouTube videos of women describing it and articles and things of that nature. So since you've been a woman your whole life, <laughs> how would you define femininity? I would define femininity as a woman's essence. It's her walk. It's her talk. It's the way that she makes a man feel like a man without downplaying her power and her own specific skill set. So that's the main thing when it comes to femininity. So it's like her, her essence, her aura, and her, her feminine power. Her feminine power. It's just the way you move. I, really the way you move. I've always, you know, get made fun of because of my walk. Well, I walk very feminine. <laughs> I lead with my hips. The way you just carry yourself is your back straight. Yeah, your essence. I never knew you got made fun of for your walk, but maybe that... Oh, yeah. They call it stank. <laughs> I think that, that leads into maybe my next question. Maybe you get made fun of for your feminine walk because it seems as if society is uh, trying to move things away from traditional femininity and into some kind of amorphous in the middle. I don't know. We're all the same trans. I, I don't know what to describe it. I'll come up with a word. <laughs> I'll come up with a word eventually. But do you think society moving away from traditional gender roles moving away from traditional relationships, moving away from traditionally masculine men and feminine women. Do you think that plays a role in why dating is more difficult now than it used to be and why relationships are having more trouble now than they used to have? I think it definitely plays a part. But when I think about how people grow up, okay, women are, especially if they're growing up in a single parent home, we are raised to be able to do everything at this point. You need to know how to wash a car, take care of yourself, because if you don't get a man, you need to make sure that you know how to do it yourself. So I think that kind of led to the, I remember in the 90s, it was really big on women being independent because typically women got married at 18. So now you have women who are older, and we're not waiting on men anymore. We have to get jobs. We have to step out in the field. And I think that takes away from the femininity because we have to start competing things that women weren't necessarily, uh, necessarily didn't have to do. And then you have men, especially growing up in a single parent home, sometimes the mother doesn't think, uh, the mother is making up for lack of. So they get babied, in my opinion, and they're not taught as much as women are. And so then you have, you know, women who in their dating life feel like they have men that they have to take care of. Yeah. And so that's a conflict within dating itself. It's like people want to move away from gender roles in the relation. Like at the beginning, it's like, oh, we're moving away from gender roles. But as soon as the relationship gets serious or you want to get married, it's like a switch is supposed to flip on. OK, now this is what you're supposed to do. And now this is what you're supposed to do. I feel like that happens. 
Because when you're dating, if a man just wants to have fun, okay, we're dating. I don't necessarily care about certain things that you have or certain characteristics that you have. You're funny, can't cook. But then all of a sudden you get married. It's like, wait a minute, hold on. I need you to learn. I need you to cook. I need you to serve me my plate. I don't want paper plates and things of that nature. And women, all of a sudden, I'm not taking out the trash. And so it's just like, it was all fun and games until it got serious. And now all of a sudden you want these roles to start and you've never discussed those roles or you've never had those roles in the process of dating. Yeah, you said a mouthful there. I guess going back to single parent homes, it takes a man to raise a boy into a man. All the guys that I know who have gotten married and who are actually quality men, either had their father in their life or they had a stepdad that came in when they were three and didn't know anything and stayed throughout the rest of their childhood. I can't name two that were raised with only mama that I'm not saying, you know, I'm just speaking from my own experience. I can't name two that I would want to introduce to one of my sisters, you know what I mean? Who are, mm-hmm. who are both unmarried. And, you know, I don't want to blame single mom that much, but it's a terrible cycle. I feel like that kind of builds on itself. Single mothers raise women that well-adjusted guys aren't necessarily into because they might be too masculine. And they also raise men that women don't want (laughs) because they've been baby, they're irresponsible, they're not masculine, they're, you know, they might be too emotional and things of that nature. So, so this just kind of leads to another generation of dysfunctional. We just use each other for fun and sex and and move on type relationships. That's That's it right there. Bad domino chain reaction, (laughs) chicken or the egg type situation. I hear you on that. So earlier you spoke of you got married at a later age. I believe the average age for a woman to get married nowadays is about 27 and a half or 27.8 years. Of course, a couple of generations ago, it was like 21. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so that's definitely moving closer to 30. And I know you got married after the age of 30. So you had, you know, you get 12, 14, 16 years in the dating game and the dating world. So as you think back on your time dating and either having fun or searching for love or whatever your mentality was at the time, do you think, or do you have any regrets on how you approached dating? at different phases of your life in the past? I have absolutely zero regret. Now, if you were to ask me when I was 30 and in the trenches, oh, I would have had all the regrets in the world. But I think back now at this age, being married for five years and just looking over the scope of things that I can actually remember about my dating life. I mean, I lived. I had fun. I may have cried a couple of times. I can't even remember what I cried about, who I cried over, but I went out, I had a good time. I used men for dinner sometimes. It was just, hey, it was a blast. I lived. I went through every dating phase that I think every woman should go through. I dated losers, F-boys, older men, (laughs) younger men. It was fun and I I have no regrets about that at all. I think that made me into the woman that I am right now and helped me know what I wanted and also helped me be a better woman to my husband to appreciate the things that he actually brought to the table that was different from what I went through. So, nope, no regrets on my dating life at all. Yeah, I was going to preface that question because there's a definitely a mentality that whatever you go through or whatever decisions you made in the past, as long as wherever you are right now was good, you had to go through those things and it made you the person that you were and things of that nature. I know my one of my sisters will tell me that when we're in discussions, but I mean, I agree with that and I disagree with it at the same time because I kind of feel like, yes, you can learn that you shouldn't put your hand on the stove by uh, burning yourself a few times, but you can also learn by listening to other people or watching your older sibling do it first and you not having to do it yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So do you think you'd be singing the same tune if you hadn't been married for five years and you're still out here swiping left and swiping right and have five apps and, and trying to figure out what's going on here? I don't know, because honestly, I don't know if I'd be swiping left and swiping right. I would probably be just at home chilling, (laughs) probably at the point where I'm just okay. I have some single girlfriends who are the same age as me, and I feel like they're at that point where it is what it is. Somebody comes along, that would be great, but it's not a strong desire for them. And I think I would probably be the same way. You think they're okay with this, or they just are resigned to the fact of their status in life? It may have been resigned, but they're also, again, busy. 
for us, online dating is a little difficult for our generation. It's not as easy because, you know, it was brand new. You get on a dating app and you see somebody, you see a whole bunch of people that you know, and you're like, oh, let me get off of this dating app. I don't want to see, I don't want people to see me. <laughs> so we're still caught in that. And I think people, you know, the younger generation, they're just like, I don't care. Hey, how you doing? Let's date. And we don't date the same. So I think they may, it may be a little bit that they've resigned to that position, but I still think it's a confidence in self as well. With the online dating, you know, when we first became of dating age, it was definitely taboo to even entertain that, you know, uh, things definitely have changed in the last 10 years. Now it's commonly accepted. You know, you used to meet people, but I mean, <laughs> how far did that really go? <laughs> yeah, d- didn't go too far. You know, old MySpace and all those those crazy sites with the 8-bit <laughs> graphics and cheesy <laughs> Music in the background. The HTML, you said it scroll going across. Yeah, the everybody has to learn the coding to get their page together. Yes, we were coding and didn't know it, see? Mm-hmm. Didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so really, no regrets from back in your dating days? You wouldn't change anything or do anything differently? No. Well, there's one thing, but I feel like I still grew from that. I was dating a guy and he was cheating on me. And I think that was a surprise to me because up until then I was high self-esteem. Like what guy would cheat on me? Is he crazy? And he was like really cheating on me. I went from the high self-esteem to the low self-esteem to actually like competing with this girl. Like we would go back and forth. (laughs) And then one day I said, am I competing? Like competing for his attention when he's clearly cheating on me? So I think that's the part that I regret, but I also learned that I'm not going to compete. And I, I use that to always mentor cousins and stuff when you get to that point that's not what you want like it's not about to be a competition between it should never be a competition between you and somebody else that's when you say hey baby if that's what you want you need to go on over there and be with her and most of the time it's not what they want they just enjoy women competing over them ego yes strokes the ego Mm -hmm. i know in my more recent dating life that's kind of been something i said i like (laughs) i don't even necessarily care about the competition i'm like if you want that over there (laughs) <laughs> go get that over there or whatever, but mm-hmm. I doubt it's better than this over here. So do you remember, was there a certain age or event or anything that happened? Do you remember when you went from dating for fun or dating w- without marriage in mind to dating with an eye on marriage? I feel like I've always, even in my college days, I've always dated with this marriage in mind, although I was clearly not ready. It was always, let me get in this relationship, you know, in my longer relationships, I'm in this relationship, you know, we talk about the future. And of course, there's always a point that you think that you're going to get married. But I remember my retirement from the scene. I was in Club Sting, (laughs) in Club Sting. And I remember being with my girls and we used to go out. I mean, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we used to be out. And I remember being in Sting and we just all looked at each other and it just wasn't the same anymore. And I remember we looked up and we were like, you ready to go? And we were all ready to go. It was clearly about 12 o'clock and we were ready to go home. I think for me, that's when I realized I was over the, the clubbing scene for one and that I would really rather spend my Friday nights and my Saturday nights with the comfort of you know laying up on the couch and watching movies or laughing. I would rather spend it that way. So that was my transition into wanting something a little bit more serious that was also kind of laid back at the same time. It was never about children for me or a biological clock ticking. I was just tired of out there doing hot girl stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was, what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago? That puts you late 20s, early 30s, what? It was very late 20s. Yeah, I was probably about 28, 28. I was done. <laughs> It was fun while it lasted, though. Yeah, I hear you. There's a a controversial, famous YouTuber that I don't know if you've heard of, Kevin Samuels, who uh, is blowing up recently. And (laughs) he says, uh, what, age 27 through 35 is like the danger zone. And that's kind of the time period that women who played around in their early 20s kind of start realizing that they got to get more serious about this relationship thing or they might miss the last train and just be a, a cat lady for the rest of their life. So I guess he is that, so, yeah, that cat lady <laughs> or, or get a dog and all the stuff that he's talking about. So 28, 27 is pretty close. 
yeah it was just more so about companionship and not being out so yeah it hit <laughs> yes ma'am so you you partially answered this question already but I'll state it again so you can more thoroughly address it. What type of dating advice would you give an, a younger relative or an unmarried friend that kind of looks up to you? What kind of dating advice would you give them that would kind of increase their chances of finding somebody that's serious and willing to marry them and would cut down on the time where they have to deal with heartbreak and, and headaches? I would say know what you want up front and speak what you want up front. Make no exceptions. For major wants. Don't be, oh, well, he's cute, so I'm going to let this slide. No, make no exceptions for the major things that you want. But bend on the little things like, oh, he has to be super attractive. Mm-mm. Super attractive means you're going to have a whole lot of other issues that you, <laughs> that you deal with. But definitely knowing what you want is super important and not letting that list waver once you know what's compatible for you. I would say, what is it, Maya Angelou says, when, when people show you who they are, believe them. That first time, I believe all women have that intuition. So when you feel something is up, something is up. Go with that gut feeling. And no matter, you can show pictures and prove it to a man and he will sit there and deny it. Like, that's not me. <laughs> R. Kelly did it. Uh, yeah. So What's that song? Sure. It wasn't me, Shaggy or whatever. It wasn't me. And just don't waver from anything that you know that you want because then you'll just end up in a situation where you've kind of lost and not even about having the upper hand but you've lost a little bit of yourself and then you'll end up looking back at it like I was with a whole dude that I really didn't even like for what for sake of being in a relationship he was cute though exactly better get you an average dude keep it moving (laughs) I'm start calling you Kavina Samuels if you keep talking about <laughs> better get you an average dude and keep it moving. But uh, I won't keep speaking on him because I'm trying to make my own name here. Any other advice? Like, would you tell them a certain type of guy? I mean, I know everyone has their different types and then maybe, you know, their different personalities. But outside of get an average dude, make the best of it and move forward. These type of guys are, tend to be more serious than these other type of guys or, or what? Do you have anything like that or? I would definitely look into their background, their family background. How did they grow up? What is their mother like? I feel like that's important. Are they open to, are they working on self? Are they open to counseling or are they just completely set in who they are? I truly believe that everybody can benefit from counseling, but when you find out people don't want to do it, it's like, okay. Also, note their hairline. If their hairline is receding, they're ready. Wow, I feel offended, even though my hairline is is pretty good. You have a full you have a full hairline there, but when guys start losing their hair, oh, it's time for them to start getting serious. The player mode is over, and now it's dad time. Okay, exactly. They they say women. What he he said twenty seven for women. When that hairline get to receding for men, oh, okay, they need to find a woman that, that they can be with. So that's definitely something that they need to look into. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard that before, but it, as I look at friends and other people that I know, it might be on to something. The haircuts get real low. Yes. I found the one, man. I found the one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. That's crazy. All right. So, <laughs> so look for the guys with the receding hairlines and who come from good families and you might have you I might mean, have your Boaz there. Okay. You might have your Boaz, definitely. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Now, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsor, Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Third, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Next, hey, you can even make money from your podcast with minimal listenership. I mean... It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. 
So this is what I want you to do. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, let's turn back the clock a little bit. I remember something you, that you said over 10, over 12 years ago when we were in a group of people Ooh. talking about dating and relationships. I guess somebody asked, why is it more difficult now? Or what's the issue now compared to, you know, previous generations? And you said something to the effect of people of our generation want to, they only want to date a finished product and they're not willing to date a good person with potential and grow with them. They want something that's already, they want to step in, reap the benefits of somebody that's already a finished product. Do you remember that or do you still feel the same way about that? Or It sounds like something that I would have definitely said in my dating, my dating years. It, it definitely sounds like something I would have said. I mean, I agree. You just can't step in with men, when men are a finished product. Mm, it's not nice, but just thinking about it, it's an arrogant, I'm a finished product. That's when the table switch and men become, oh, you should work for me versus a man working for a woman. And that's that gender role switch. So when you have that finished product, he has everything and he's looking at what can you bring to the table? I don't think women do well in that switch. So definitely. But although nothing is ever really a truly a finished product. Agree with that. Um, yeah, I would definitely think uh, no, no, I'm not saying, you know, get you somebody that's not doing anything at all and they always say you know women fall in love with the potential i think you can still fall in love with potential but what are the actions toward it is he just talking about what he wants to do or is he really putting forth the effort is he in school is he working on a trade or is he building his business and by any means necessary somebody that's working for it and has the potential. And I believe that you can really see when a man has potential to hustle because if if he wants to provide for his family, nothing's going to stop, no matter what. He'll sell loose cigarettes outside of a grocery store if he needs to, so. Yeah, he just needs to make sure he's uh, not in certain cities that- Exactly. That take that crime a little bit more seriously than other cities, but we won't speak on that. I feel like when I bring this subject up, people like to talk in extremes, speak against struggle love. Oh, I don't want any struggle love. Uh, I don't want to. But it's uh, it kind of like you said, you can find somebody that's not necessarily struggling, doing nothing, but somebody that is doing a little bit of something and has aspirations of doing more and hit your wagon to that person. Y'all can grow together in the future. You don't necessarily have to wait until he already is making six figures and he already has the house on the hill and things of that nature. Then you want to slide in at that point. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I feel like I know from the male perspective, we're real suspicious of women that slide in at that point anyway. Do you remember exactly. the uh, the great philosopher? I think his name is Michael Jones. And he says something like, back then you did not want me, <laughs> but now I'm hot. You are all on me. I think he said something of that nature. He, so, did, uh, he, did. he didn't speak of the women that were all on him. Once he got hot, that with too much respect, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. you, you want to hop on this train after I'm succeeding? Well, I'll just use you up and spit you out and throw you to the side of the road and move on. Exactly. I can't trust you. Exactly. And that's exactly what would happen. That's why you have to, I mean, you have to catch him on the come up. <laughs> catch him on the come up and come up with him. Yeah, I feel like part of the reason maybe relationships these days don't last as long as they used to, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them, I've always said is that people bond when they go through difficult times together. If you look at people that are in the military, who are their closest friends, people they went to boot camp with, people who they went to Iraq with and they dodged missiles together and almost died together. You know, you go through something traumatic, go through something difficult, friends for life. Fraternities, sororities, you go through line, you you know, rush, whatever you want to call it, pledging. You know, you have to do stupid things at 3 a.m. You get paddled if you're a dude. You you do all this crazy stuff. Difficult time. Y'all came through it together. Y'all went through it together, came through it together. Friends for life. You know, you're now your best man at my wedding. Now you're at my 60th birthday party, yada, yada, yada. Um, Grandma and grandpa, they got married early. They started off with the mattress on the floor in the one room shack outhouse and by the time we were old enough to to meet them they got the the four bedroom house and central heating and all that and they started from the bottom now they're here 
as another philosopher once said. And going through all that with somebody, it builds a bond. So it's Definitely. much more difficult to just throw that all away. You know, you spent too much money on the credit card, so I'm going to throw away this 40 years that we, you know, that doesn't make any sense. You, <laughs> you get more patient with the other person. You work things out because you got so much history. Who are you you're going to find somebody else that can replace all that bond and that history that you have with person A? Absolutely not. So No, you're not. <laughs> so that's why grandpa and grandma lasted longer than relationships now because we're marrying in our mid to late 30s and, you know, all the struggle and confusion and development of our youth we didn't go through with our partners so we don't have that bond and that history so we're not necessarily as tight now I'm not wishing anything ill on on your situation or my potential future (laughs) situation I'm just saying in general I've always felt that to be the case what do you think about that I agree you know you definitely have to go through something to build that bond not to say that if you get married in your late your mid to late 30s that there are not things that you're going to go through but you've kind of already eliminated some of the struggle at some point within your career you're at a good salary at some point you know but there are instances you know with the economy somebody could get laid off and that's a true test of your marriage are you what are you here for are you here through the good times and the bad times so definitely I think the struggle bonded them and the fact that they were married at an early age and sometimes for the woman she didn't know anything else so it was easier for her to stay because this is the man that she's been with all her life she doesn't know anything else when you get married older you know you know other stuff (laughs) so it may be easier for you to say, forget this. I'm not down with this. I'm, I'm going back in that pool, in the dating pool and figure something else out. So, yeah, no struggle love. I hear you. Well, it's about that time that we wrap the dating portion of this interview up. So let me ask you one last dating related question. I know you haven't been in the dating market for seven, eight years now, but, you know, you said you had some single friends, family members, things of that nature. So. What do you think the biggest issue is in the dating world today? Where do you meet people? I mean, like I said, I know I'm married, but I have my single friends don't know where to meet people because it's like we don't go to the club. And if you're in my generation, you don't typically do online dating. And so for me, it's I always telling them, you got to get out there and meet somebody. Go sit at the bar by yourself. Go to the movies by yourself. And I feel like some women are scared to sit at the bar by themselves. Like, literally go do it and i promise you somebody will come up to you speaking of that not to cut you off at the time of this recording my podcast episode entitled work for love i believe that's the newest episode i have out now and i kind of talk about that so you definitely want to check that out it's it's my friend's favorite one i'll check that out tomorrow actually while uh, my kids are testing and i have my headphones on listening to stuff (laughs) good stuff Um, anyway what else were you gonna say But yeah, put yourself out there, especially if you're not into the online dating. I feel like people like to be familiar with the person that they're dating. And that was always important to me. I need to be familiar with you in a sense. I didn't like dating strangers. It always felt weird. That means you need to be looking at friends. (laughs) How do you know this person? You went to high school with this person. Tell me how they were. So there's some familiarity that you have with somebody. My husband and I went to high school together. So it was comfortable. It was easy for us because we were from the same area, same part of town. So definitely look into asking people to hook you up. I know some people don't like to do it, but ask somebody, do you know Do you know anyone? Don't be opposed to divorced men. They've learned some lessons. They might be good and they might be, a, not no, they're a better product because they have some experience and hopefully they've done some reflection to know the difference between what they did in their marriage and what they need to do in future relationships. And I know one major one also, you know, some women don't like to date men with kids, but the older that you get, smaller that pool gets. You know, I was fortunate and, you know, anybody who's dating you is fortunate, but sometimes, you know, the kids happen, especially if you're dating a man in his late thirties, he done slipped up, got lost in the sauce one good time, but does he take care of his kids too? So. Shot the club up, yeah. That's the new Shot slang. The club up. That's right. Still on my Usher confession, lost in the sauce. <laughs> I hear you. That's how old I am. One of the greatest <laughs> albums ever, if you ask me. Ever, ever. So yeah, you just really just have to be open. And I mean, hey, if the UPS man is fine, open the door when he rings the doorbell. <laughs> Put yourself out there. Makes sense to me.
All right, I hope you enjoyed the first half of the Perspective of a Mrs. Interview, part two, coming soon. Before I leave you, just wanted to go down, recap some of her answers, and highlight a few things. She defined femininity as a woman's essence, her walk, her talk, how she makes a man feel like a man without downplaying herself. She agreed that society moving away from traditional roles has made dating more difficult. She also explained at least one of the reasons why things have changed in this direction. She said she had no dating regrets, and then I had to kind of twist the arm a little bit. Then she recounted a dating situation that she wasn't the proudest of. Side note, in my personal opinion, if she didn't get her happily ever after moment and end up finding a husband, that she indeed would have regretted her dating past. But hey, who knows? Next thing we discussed was what age she thinks women go from dating for fun to dating seriously. And she just kind of recounted her history and came up with the age of 28, which goes along with many theories in the male perspective dating community online. What advice would she give to a, a younger female relative and their dating pursuits? One, know what you want, speak it, make no exceptions for the major things, bend on all other things. When people show you who they are, believe them and trust your intuition. I inquired about her suggesting types of guys women should look for if they want somebody they can settle down with. She said look for guys who have a good family background, men who are working on themselves, and then she threw a curveball in there. Look for men whose hairline has started receding because they're more serious than guys with a full head of hair. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny. Next thing that we tackled was I went back 12, 13 years and brought up the quote regarding her thinking the part of the problem with dating is people always want to date a finished product who's already made it and refuse to date men before they have made it. And she agreed with what she said 12 years ago, that that's still a, a potential issue. Guys who have already made it, guys who are already successful. When a woman comes into her life at that point, it's almost a role reversal that you're going to have to be chasing after him and he's not going to be trying to woo and impress you. And she resented that fact. But then she warned women to only fall for men with potential if they have work behind it. So they're working toward whatever they have potential to do. Not just that they have potential and they're playing PS5 all day long. Uh, I shared a story about how people tend to bond when they go through tough times together and that makes lifelong friendships and makes marriages more stable and more long lasting. She agreed with that. She agreed that you must go through something in order to really develop a bond when dating. I asked her what the biggest issue was in the dating world today and she felt that her friends thought that their biggest issue is not knowing where to meet guys that they would be interested in outside of online dating not being able to meet guys the old-fashioned way and then she suggested some things that I had already suggested in a previous podcast about putting yourself out there and being more proactive in your own love life or maybe lowering your standards on certain things like a man who's had a divorce in the past or might have a kid and that's how far we've gotten so far so stay tuned come back next week for the conclusion of the perspective of a missus interview until we meet again That should just about wrap things up. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. And if you found any part of this episode helpful, thought-provoking, or intriguing, please share it with a friend. The more people I can help, the better I feel within. If you have any questions, any suggestions for new topics for me to discuss in the future, or if you need any clarification on anything I have spoken on, please just shoot me an email at whatishethinking at gmail.com. What, I-Z, he thinking at gmail.com. Or you can send me a message via my Anchor website. All you need to do is go to anchor.fm forward slash what I Z he thinking forward slash message anchor.fm slash what is he thinking slash message 
go there, leave me a couple words. And if it's constructive, I will definitely get back to you or keep your thoughts in mind when I record future podcasts. And never forget, I'm not here to tickle your ear. My only goal is to tell you what you need to know. I'm not here to offend. I just want to see you win with men. Well, until we meet again.